Horizons of International Trade Integration into the world economy has proven to be a powerful means for countries to promote economic growth, development and poverty reduction. Over the last 20 years, the growth of world trade has averaged 6% per year, twice as fast as world output. But trade has been an engine of growth for much longer. Since 1947, when the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, was created, the world trading system had benefited from eight rounds of multilateral trade liberalization, as well as from unilateral and regional liberalization. The resulting integration of the world economy has raised living standards around the world. Most developing countries have shared in this prosperity in some, incomes have risen dramatically. A prime concern today for most policymakers everywhere is how to maximize the development benefits of globalization and trade, to minimize their economic, social, human, and environmental costs, and to make these the overarching objectives of trade-driven globalization. The real losers from globalization are those developing countries that have not been able to seize the opportunities to participate in this process. In this lesson, we cover these and any other such issues in international trade. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to describe the scope of international trade, point out the factors determining international trade, appreciate the role of international trade in economic development of countries explain the future of international trade. Trade originated centuries ago because different sets of people had something the other wanted, whether finished products, natural resources or food. The Industrial Revolution, which began in the mid-18th century, enabled a few economies to develop and compete in similar goods. Historically, Trade has consisted largely of the sale and shipment of goods among countries. Business leaders and policy analysts have been educated on trade theories and case studies that use the physical exchange of goods to demonstrate what economists call comparative advantage and the social welfare gains from international trade. The economic theory behind traditional international trade describes it in terms of absolute and comparative advantage. But traditional trade is also driven by a more sophisticated concept, comparative advantage, which is about countries specializing in what they do best. One key reason why traditional trade has been predominantly in goods for end use is the existence of tariff and non-tariff barriers. Trade barriers raise the cost of imports, discourage the general expansion of trade and result in lower trade or GDP ratios. Trade in services is most easily understood by thinking about businesses earning revenue from foreign sources that then flows into a company's income statement. Services, exports and imports of all types have been part of the traditional trade. Sectors as varied as transport, tourism, and management consulting earn revenue from foreigners, that is, export a service, and thus contribute to the generation of national wealth and jobs. Financial services have traditionally been the largest sector in terms of services related FDI and sales from foreign affiliates, but the financial services share is slipping, as many other forms of services, from technology installation to management advice to entertainment, are being delivered internationally via investment in foreign affiliates. The evolution to integrative trade means that countries and businesses will earn foreign income and generate foreign exchange in different and expanding ways. Many companies' income statements will rely increasingly on the reflow of profits and dividends from their foreign affiliates. 
remittances from individuals working abroad for their company's foreign affiliates should grow and become more visible as workers send home a portion of their earnings and savings. The reasons for international trade are domestic non-availability, principle of comparative advantage, differences in technology, differences in resource endowments, differences in demand, existence of economies of scale in production, existence of government policies. A nation trades because it lacks the raw materials, climate, specialist labor, capital or technology needed to manufacture a particular good. Trade allows a greater variety of goods and services. The principle of comparative advantage states that countries will benefit by concentrating on the production of those goods in which they have a relative advantage. Technology refers to the techniques used in turn resources, that is, labor, capital and land into outputs. Advantageous trade can occur between countries if the countries differ in their endowments of resources. Resource endowments refers to the skills and abilities of a country's workforce, the natural resources available within its borders and the sophistication of its capital stock. Advantageous trade can occur between countries if demands or preferences differ between countries. Individuals in different countries may have different preferences or demands for various products. The existence of economies of scale in production is sufficient to generate advantageous trade between two countries. Economies of scale refer to a production process in which production costs fall as the scale of production rises. This feature of production is also known as increasing returns to scale. Government tax and subsidy programs can be sufficient to generate advantages in production of certain products. The last decade as well as the prognosis for the future is marked by the increased dynamism and impact of trade on development and the world economy. The sheer size, scale and growth of trade and its potential impact on development are the main features of globalization. World exports of goods and services doubled between 1995 and 2006 to reach over US dollar 14 trillion in 2006. A major contributing factor has been the spectacular growth in the share of international merchandise and services trade of several dynamic developing countries. This growth has resulted in new and enhanced opportunities for trade and development. Lower economic output brought on in part by the sharp rise in oil prices will slow world trade growth in 2005, according to World Trade Organization economists. World merchandise exports are expected to grow by 6.5% in 2005, markedly less than the 9% growth recorded in 2004. In 2006, the volume of world merchandise trade grew by 8%, while world gross domestic product recorded a 3.5% increase. Weakening demand in developed countries, realignments in exchange rates, and fluctuations in the prices of commodities such as oil and gas introduced uncertainties into the global markets in 2007. These latest figures come in the official comprehensive compilation for 2007, International Trade Statistics 2008. According to the International Monetary Fund's International Financial Statistics IFS, World merchandise exports in dollar terms during the first seven months of 2008 registered 23.3% growth as against 14.5% a year ago. The list of major traders appears to be dominated by large economies. In 2006, for example, the smallest 80% of exporters accounted for just 10% of the world trade. However, this calculation does not take into account 
the population of economies. To better account for differences in population, cumulative shares of economies in world population are plotted against their collective shares in world merchandise exports after sorting them in ascending order by population. This second curve is not smooth because economies with similar populations may make very different marginal contributions to the world trade. But it does not suggest that trade in terms of people rather than countries is more evenly distributed. Asia has the highest share of manufacturers in total exports with more than 80% of the region's exports stemming from this product group. In contrast, the Middle East, Africa and the CIS are highly dependent on fuels and mining products with more than two-thirds of their export revenues originating from this product group. This pattern of specialization was accentuated with the rise in international commodity prices. During 1995 to 2005, the share of developing countries in the world trade saw a three-fold increase reaching an impressive US dollar 3.7 trillion. The aggregate trade performance of developing countries has been impressive. However, it has been neither a continuous process nor uniformly spread across developing regions. The newly industrialized economies and China together account for almost the entire rise in the share of world exports of developing countries taken as a group. China's trade growth continued to outstrip other major traders. China's merchandise exports grew by 27%. The second half of 2006, its merchandise exports started to exceed those of the United States. But for the whole year, U.S. exports still exceeded those of China. The four regions with the highest share of fuels and other mining products in their merchandise exports recorded the strongest annual export growth in 2006. Except for a few industrializing economies in Asia and some dynamic developing countries, the exports of other developing countries still concentrate on a limited range of natural resource-based products and or manufactured products with low value addition. These have made for small returns. These developing countries have also suffered from worsening terms of trade, highly volatile world prices, as well as actually experienced a decline in the share in world trade. It is also clear that increased participation in dynamic and new sectors of world trade is critical to successful export performance and to development in general. The dynamic sectors of world trade are those that have grown five times in value since 1995 and now constitute at least US dollar 10 billion in value. New sectors are also growing rapidly and include niche and specialty goods and services for which the returns are very high. Sectoral reviews of new and dynamic sectors have been carried out by UNCTAD for the purpose of strengthening developing countries participation through identifying policy prerequisites for successful productive capacity building, competitiveness and better market access. Such reviews have covered South trade in new and dynamic sectors like energy, electronics, fish and fishery products, steel and related specialty products, IT enabled outsourcing of services, renewable energy products including biofuels, and textiles and clothing. Particular attention is given in these sectoral reviews to the needs of LDCs and African countries. Recent growth in trade in creative industries has been particularly high in OECD countries as well as in a number of leading developing countries. Regarding overall trade performance, interesting findings emerge from the systematic examination of the interaction between structural or institutional context, trade policies or processes, and the trade and development performance provided by UNCTAD's Trade and Development Index, 
TDI 2007. The TDI provides both a quantitative indication and an analytical framework to identify how well trade and development are integrated in an individual country, based not only on its trade and development performance, but also on key factors affecting this joint performance. In addition, the TDI also offers a useful new tool for comparative studies among countries or regions regarding their trade and development performance. TDI national scores are a composite quantitative indication describing the interaction between development and trade performance. The TDI 2007 incorporates a number of refinements following suggestions from governments and the academic community. Thus, three new components have been added to the structural and institutional context dimension, namely domestic finance resources, international finance resources, and macroeconomic stability in addition to six components contained in the TDI 2005. Furthermore, two new components, trade performance and economic and social well-being, have been added to the newly defined trade and development performance dimension. Trade liberalization is a key element in growth and a sustainable national development strategy. Economic growth occurs at the producer level and perhaps the most powerful incentive for producers to raise productivity is competition. There is no substitute for good domestic policies in the quest for competitiveness. Indeed, Research shows that countries with better institutions and countries that trade more go faster. And the countries with better institutions also tend to trade more. In the same vein, increased openness does not necessarily lead to growth in economies with excessive regulation. The pace of regulatory reform in many developing countries has been impressive. Doing business report is a good window into domestic reforms and indeed has been used as a driver of reform by many countries. For example, business regulations, property rights, trade policies and the rule of law are particularly relevant to the ability of entrepreneurs to operate and prosper in any economy. Injecting transparency and accountability into the business environment can increase productive activity and reduce crippling rent-seeking behavior. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Socialization is a key element in growth and a sustainable national development strategy. Right or wrong? Wrong. Trade barriers raise the cost of imports. Right or wrong? Right. UNDP stands for United Nations Development Program. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Several factors have played an important role in the recent expansion of trade, the growing integration of economies, and the increasing contribution of trade to development. These include the liberalization of tariffs and other barriers to trade, foreign direct investment through trade and investment negotiations and agreements, autonomous unilateral structural reforms, technological innovations in transport and communications, international solidarity through supportive measures. Assuring development gains from international trade in the context of trade-driven globalization necessitates improving the quantitative benchmarks of integration in international trade through increased trade performance, increasing shares in world trade and in GDP. Accelerated economic growth and increased returns from trade should be channelized into achieving human and social development including food security, energy security, rural development, universal access to essential services, gender equity, 
and poverty reduction. All of these noble objectives are embodied in internationally agreed development goals, including in the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, and the Monetary Consensus on Financing for Development, reducing inequalities and democratizing the trade and development gains within and across countries should become the essential attributes of the globalizing world. Trade-driven globalization has reached unprecedented pace, scope and scale. It has spawned new opportunities and realities as well as persistent challenges to the acceleration of economic growth, development and poverty reduction. Several factors have played an important role in the recent expansion of trade, the growing integration of economies, and the increasing contribution of trade to development.